welcome you all for a new video on the semiconductor material the basic semiconductor materials which are known as silicon and germanium at its intrinsic state the conductivity will be zero for a semiconductor crystal at zero kelvin therefore to increase the conductivity we try to go with the thermal generation of electron hole pairs and that can be achieved in a semiconductor where the charge carriers uh, maybe purposefully uh, we can introduce some of the impurities and that process is what we call it as basically doping so depending on the type of impurities the doped semiconductor may be n type or may be p type and in a doped semiconductor the electron concentration and the hole concentration are completely different so in this first part of the video we'll first understand or we'll just go with a review of concepts about the carrier concentration intrinsic semiconductor what is compensation doping what is charge neutrality mass action law and then in the second part of the video we will solve problems that are related to this particular topic so this will definitely help you in cracking many of the problems related to the carrier concentration let us first understand about intrinsic semiconductor where we classify a semiconductor crystal with no impurities or defects as an intrinsic semiconductor and we know that at zero kelvin the conduction band will be completely empty and the valence band is completely filled and there are no mobile charge carriers at zero kelvin okay so the conductivity of an intrinsic semiconductor at absolute zero temperature is going to be zero but as the temperature increases what happens the electrons from the valence band are excited to the conduction band and the conductivity increases with temperature and the conductivity of an intrinsic semiconductor also decrease with increase in the band gap as more energy is required to excite an electron from the valence band to the conduction band when the band gap is more so if an electron in the valence band gets energy equal to the band gap it gets excited from balance band to the conduction band as a result a vacancy is created in the valence band and an electron in the conduction band so this is what we call it as the electron hole pair so here i have just mentioned this is the maximum energy level of the valence band and the minimum level of energy at the conduction band and the region between the minimum of the conduction band and the maximum of the valence band is nothing but the energy band gap where there are no energy levels within this particular region so when an electron has to be excited from valence band to the conduction band the electron in the valence band should have an energy equivalent to the band gap only then it will be excited from valence band to the conduction band and then there is a formation of electron hole pair and this generation due to the thermal excitation of electrons from valence band to the conduction band is what we call it as an intrinsic generation and here as we have understood that the electrons and holes are generated in pairs the concentration of electrons in the conduction band and the holes in the valence band will be equal so therefore how do we write the intrinsic carrier concentration the concentration of electrons or holes in the intrinsic semiconductor at thermal equilibrium is referred as the intrinsic carrier concentration ni and this will be equivalent to the number of electron concentration and the number of holes which is called as the hole concentration at thermal equilibrium and this is for an intrinsic semiconductor the intrinsic carrier function is also a function of temperature because based on the temperature the carrier concentration will increase but the number of electrons in the conduction band and the number of holes in the valence band will remain equal because they are generated in terms of pairs as temperature increases thermal generation rate increases but resulting in the overall increase of the intrinsic carrier concentration so therefore the number of electrons increases and the number of holes also increases in the same number now with respect to the extrinsic semiconductor or doped semiconductor the electron concentration and the hole concentration are completely different so this condition is what is applicable for an extrinsic semiconductor and also we need to know that a semiconductor which is doped with pentavalent impurities is what is called as a n type semiconductor so pentavalent impurity introduces energy levels in the band gap that are closer to the conduction band so those formula level discussion we will again take it in a different video now for the understanding of the carrier concentration due to doping in an n type semiconductor the electron concentration increases from the intrinsic carrier concentration value approximately equivalent to the 
donor impurity concentration so therefore here with respect to the n type semiconductor n naught will increase to a value greater than ni and p naught will be lesser than ni then this is for an n type semiconductor and that is why the electrons are referred to as the majority charge carriers and holes are referred as the minority charge carriers in an n type semiconductor similarly a semiconductor which is doped with trivalent impurities forms a p type semiconductor and here the impurities introduces energy levels in the band gap of either silicon or germanium which is nearer to the valence band edge and here we need to understand that for a p type semiconductor p naught will be greater than ni and n naught the electron concentration will be lesser than ni and that is the reason why holds a majority charge carries in a p-type semiconductor to solve problems related to the carrier concentration in a semiconductor material we need to understand about the additional concept which is called as the compensation so where this is just the process of adding opposite type of impurity to an already doped semiconductor suppose if you have taken a pure form of semiconductor and if you have added a trivalent impurities that's a p-type doped semiconductor that's an already doped semiconductor and you are going to add opposite type of impurity which means already doped p-type semiconductor with trivalent impurities you are now going to add pentavalent impurities so finally in a semiconductor if equal amount of opposite type of impurities is added the resulting material will again become intrinsic so such a material is what you call it is completely compensated semiconductor because already you have taken an intrinsic semiconductor you have doped with trivalent impurities to make it as a p-type doped semiconductor so i'm just telling an example with respect to the initial point of p-type doped semiconductor and now to give a compensation you are adding opposite type of impurities which we know that is pentavalent impurities so therefore equal amount of opposite type of impurities are added so the resulting material will again become intrinsic so such a material we call that as a completely compensated semiconductor so by adding opposite type of impurities an n type semiconductor can be converted to a p type semiconductor and vice versa and before we proceed with the problem solving approach let us also recollect about the concepts of mass action law and charge neutrality mass action law states that at a given temperature the product of equilibrium electron concentration and hole concentrations in a semiconductor is going to be a constant for any doping and it is going to be equal to the square of the intrinsic area concentration at that temperature now suppose that we consider a homogeneous semiconductor which means of uniform doping where we have nd donors per centimeter cube and na acceptors per centimeter cube this i have taken in general so under equilibrium the semiconductor as a whole is again going to remain neutral which means the total positive charge will be equivalent to the total negative charge so the total positive charge will become p naught plus nd plus where nd plus represents the ionized donor concentration so because after giving or donating the electrons they become positive charge and after they accept so these acceptor atoms they are gaining the negative charge so they also accommodate to the total negative charge in terms of along with the electron concentration at the thermal equilibrium condition so i've just reoriented this equation and i've written as n0 minus p0 equal to nd plus minus na minus where na minus that is representing the ionized acceptor concentration so this is basically the charge neutrality equation but what happens above 150 kelvin the all the impurities they get ionized and so that nd plus becomes nd and na minus becomes na so the final equation after all the impurities got ionized it will be n naught minus p naught equal to nd minus na i hope this video was useful for you all to review about the concepts of what intrinsic semiconductor is basically and how the conductivity of an intrinsic semiconductor can be improved with the help of doping and how to achieve an extrinsic semiconductor either n type or the p type and we have also understood about the energy band diagram for an intrinsic semiconductor where the fermi level lies inside an intrinsic semiconductor bands and we have also understood about a new concept which is called about the compensation doping and how the charge neutrality concept evolved from the mass action law and what does that say after 
all the impurities that got ionized what is the final equation so with this information in the second part of the video we will solve some problems related to these concepts until then thank you all for watching this video through electronics insight channel